Good morning, and welcome to St. Mother Theodore Guerin Parish. Today is the sixth Sunday in ordinary time. As we come together and celebrate the Eucharist, let us turn to our neighbor and say hello. Our gathering song will be Open Wide the Doors to Christ, found in your Mother Guerin Worship Aid, number 915. Again, that's Open Wide the Doors to Christ, found in your Guerin Songbook Worship Aid, number 915. Please stand. Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You have come to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You have come to save sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
into God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes its leaves stay green. In the year of drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response this morning is, Blessed are they who hope in the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a stretch of level ground. With a great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude and insult you, and denounce your name as evil, on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven. For their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, as we celebrate today the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, there are some good readings here today that we can reflect and meditate with. The first that speaks to us about our faith and our purpose and our desire to understand who we are as a people and the identity of our relationship with God begins perhaps with pondering the question that when something is made or created, it's usually made or invented or created for a specific purpose. 
You could say that you wouldn't ask your toaster to perhaps scramble you some eggs in the morning. The toaster was made for bread, for toasting it. The same way you wouldn't use a fork to try and eat a soup. You would fall short as all of the forkness would prevent you from scooping up really anything from your soup. And you would say this of many other things that we use and, and we know that have been invented for a purpose. A lawnmower cuts grass, it does not plow snow. And yet, when we look at ourselves about what is our purpose as human beings, we have been created in the image of God, we have been given this dignity set apart from many, many different things. And yet the human being in his condition can ask that question, what is my purpose? Is it to multiply, to have family, to build up my possessions? Is it to leave my name behind by some great deed that I have done? Is it to accumulate wealth by the work and smart and skill that I have? Is it in my talent that I have as a person that I am going to fulfill the purpose of who I am as an individual? Much philosophy and many different people in history have tried to answer this question and oftentimes they leave their mark behind by some great action or deed. We remember them for something heroic, something terrible. And yet when we think about ourselves, the question of who we are and our purpose, the answer is not found in an action that we take. The answer is found in the relationship that we have. We are relationship people. We are people who engage in relationship with others, with ourselves, and with God. This dialogue and friendship must be at the core of who we are as a people and as an individual, because from there it dictates how we view the world and how we act, and that those actions might not just be actions for the sake of actions, but may be connected to a dialogue and a relationship. Let me give you an example. When we think about our relationship with God, we understand that God is with us and that he sees the life and condition that we are in. Because Jesus says today in the gospel, blessed are those who are poor, blessed are those who are suffering, blessed are those who are persecuted. He understands that there is suffering and pain and injustice and everything that is part of this world in the human condition. And he does not say that it just magically goes away. He says that you will be rewarded and that there is something greater than what is here. He invites us into relationship with him as disciples, and in relationship with his Father in heaven, as adopted sons and daughters who see in themselves the dignity and glory of the one who created them. And then when we talk about the relationship that we have with others, we see how the Ten Commandments and the laws of God apply not as shackles or rules to my freedoms, but that the relationship that is at the core of my identity may flourish and have peace and balance. If I strive to renounce pride or ambition or anything that might take away from the other what is justly theirs, or if I try to get ahead by lying, cheating, by persevering in wicked ways, then perhaps I focus inwardly on myself and forget the relationships of those around me. And then there begins to be a change in me. That action starts to define my purpose as something that I am doing, but not truly who I am in relationship with God and my fellow people. Am I being someone that understands my purpose as identity and relationship, 
or am I seeking only to fulfill a purpose based on action? Be a good consumer. Be someone that perhaps compromises values, morals. Be someone who places God as a second, third, fourth, fifth thought. Or do we center our life in communion and relationship with God? For St. Paul says today that Christ is preached as raised from the dead. And how can some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? Our life and our purpose is not filled with just actions, but relationships. And so if we believe that Christ is raised, then he who has been raised will raise us up in our baptism. Those who have died in the death of Christ, in the human condition that is ours, that Christ took so that we could be redeemed. Now he says we, help, we will have eternal life. And if we believe this, then we will persevere. And then our hopes are not placed on this earthly dwelling. They're not placed in how much money I can make, how much perhaps luxury or pleasure or different things I can consume in actions, but they are focused on my relationship and identity of who I am with God, myself, and others. He says that Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. When we understand that we are Christians and Catholics because of our relationship with God through Christ, then our actions begin to make sense. Then we are fulfilled. And our purpose is not so much driven by actions, but by completing the relationship and dialogue that exists between us and with God. Let us think briefly on our moments of encounter in prayer. When we think of prayer, we often begin with the sign of the cross in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we think of that image of the cross, and oftentimes we just overlook it. We have an image of Jesus next to the cross. On the altar, I have an image of Christ crucified. Christ is on the cross. He is not sitting on a lazy boy recliner. That is not the image of the Christian. The image of the Christian is Christ crucified. And in that image, we find our Savior showing us that even though there is suffering, and that there is sacrifice, that there is death, a finality in our life, He has come to reclaim and give to us eternal life. But without the cross, there is no salvation. He came to accept and to love His cross. And he invites us to know and understand our own cross that we may bear, and that we may bear joyfully, not because it is heavy, not because it is burdensome, not because I would rather be sitting on a pile of pillows than to suffer. Of course, suffering hurts. It takes something painful of an experience for me to comprehend that things are not always okay and perfect. But that is this world. And there is nothing that we can do that will prevent this world from being always imperfect. And so where does our relationship with God take us? Does it take me selfishly into myself, away from my relationship with others, from my relationship to God, from my identity, of being that beloved son and daughter called to conversion, dialogue, and a purpose-filled life? Or does it change who I am and bring me into perhaps ruin as I spiral into self-centeredness, selfishness, greed, anger, wrath? These are the decisions and dialogue that is necessary for us to be called authentic Christians. In the early church, this was evident and why St. Paul speaks to them this message that if we have been now called Christians, 
identified through our baptisms as sons and daughters, then we must act like it. Begin to change. Take that step into the light, unafraid, so that when we are perhaps marginalized, when we are placed in suffering, these words of Christ, blessed are you, may reach our hearts and fill us with consolation. Not because in that moment, God will snap his fingers and everything will be okay, but because God knows that these things exist in my life, in your life, and that he permits them not so that we must endure suffering needlessly, without purpose, but so that we may appreciate the sacrifice that was made for us and begin to understand our own sacrifices as united to the cross because the symbol of our faith is the cross, the crucifixion, and no Catholic should ever hope to just be reclining on a lazy boy. We are here for purpose, but that purpose must be founded in relationship. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We gather as a community all of our prayers and petitions and our desires to grow as disciples of God. May the Holy Spirit fill us with the joy of the gospel message, and may we take always the first steps into the light full of trust and hope in the Lord. For our common ground, where our church leaders may act with genuine love for people most in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for trust in one another and to respect and befriend our differences. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek level ground where justice makes a home in our society and within our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. For our parish community, as we prayerfully reflect on our participation in the annual Catholic Appeal, and how we might bring hope to the world through our prayer, service, and financial support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those being baptized into our faith community, Lane, Juliana, Sargent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died, Barbara Jerzyk, Dennis Meager, Anthony Dunning, James Catalano, Donald Wojcik, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, Frank Pudlow, Roman and Anna Romaniak, Deacon Dennis Colgan, Aileen Pellrine, Attilio Manfredini, Dorothy Wittick, Mary Guidi O'Malley, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts and for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We gather everything always, Lord, in the hope of the gospel message of the resurrection, of our purpose in this life being fulfilled by having a true relationship of devotion to your will and your presence in our lives. Help us always to walk in newness of life, to bring to others the light of Christ and to grow in virtue in our daily life, in our daily struggles and efforts as we ask everything through Christ our Lord, amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Praise the Lord in name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord. His death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis our Pope and Blaise Supich, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us share some sign of peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those worshiping this morning via the live stream, please bow your head and join in the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please join us in our communion hymn, which can be found in your journey songbook, number 733, Lead Me, Lord. Again, in your journey songbook, number 733.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment as we have an announcement from our pastor, Father Paul Cow. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, and uh, this weekend, if you take the bulletin, you will see in the bulletin, the insert of the bulletin, the uh, brochure of the annual Catholic appeal. Like every year, we do that. So uh, I just ask you to prayerfully maybe take a look inside. And many of you parishioners have already received a mailing from Cardinal Schubert. And this year, the theme of the appeal is making all things new. We see in the pursuit, making all things new, God promised, and our responsibility. So the theme was selected to remind us that our contribution to the annual Catholic appeal enabled the funded ministries and services so that we are part of making all things new to bring hope, to bring uh, all the need to the world to bring hope to the world through our contribution. And you know, if you look into the uh, brochure, you will see a lot of different ministries that are listed in here to the annual Catholic Appeal, and 59% of the uh, money goes to support parishes, uh, challenge parishes with financially, you know, uh, support for financially and schools, and also. 30% go into the art diocesan ministry to evangelization effort, human dignity and solidarity effort to family and community ministry, religious education, continue education for priests, for staff and lay volunteers, and also to help with the Catholic relief services, support those suffering from natural disaster around the world. So 100% of our annual Catholic appeal will go to support all the ministry that I listed here. And as the Cardinal Schuppet wrote in the, his uh, letter, he said the last, the past two years have worn, out, worn us down. The pandemic, the social unrest, the upset, the family routine, the imposed separation, all this have tired us out. And in these circumstances, the Lord tells us that he is making all things new and we surely need the world, the word of promises. So this is important. And also the theme that help us, that we know we went through the pandemic, it's very difficult. But thank you for your support, especially supporting our local parents here. But if you can, we, I should encourage you to help also in Andrew Catholic Appeal, because without your support, you know, the diocese cannot help those in need, like Catholic charity and different ministries in the art diocese. Now, Paris goal this year is 41,961. And after we reach the goal, 100% of additional funds will come back to our Paris. But if you receive your platform in the mail, please complete it and mail it back and bring it to Mass, or you can bring it to Mass next weekend. Because for those who do not receive in the mailing or have not had time to respond, to it, we will conduct the, our in pew plat process at all masses next week. So thank you for your prayerful consideration and generous response to the annual Catholic appeal. May God bless you all. Enjoy the Super Bowl today, and also happy Valentine to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Father Paul. <clears throat> We only have two announcements. Join us on Tuesday, February 15th at 9 a.m. to watch season two of The Chosen. We will meet in the St. Cyprian's Rectory. And finally, please return your used palms from last year to either church and we will burn them to use them for ashes on Ash Wednesday. Thank you. We also want to comment that in two weeks we will be uh, hosting again our teen mass uh, because of the COVID restrictions that we had 
in many, many different places, in businesses and in our schools and, and throughout the city. We had to postpone our January meeting um, last month, but this February, in two, in two weeks, we'll be having our teen mass at the 11 o'clock mass, and afterwards we'll, there will be an opportunity for, for our group and our teens to, to gather for some, some activities and some food um, in our gym and in our annex. So please uh, spread the word. We're hoping to have our announcements put in the bulletin by, for next week and also uh, invite people in their school and in our community. So please join us in two weeks for our teen mass and activities and, and feedback uh, from all the parents and all the people that are, are bringing their children and our groups uh, to this church. So remember, we have to start forming our families to be able to have Christ live in us. So uh, before we do the final uh, uh, blessing, I just encourage as we are about to celebrate St. Valentine's Day tomorrow, just a, a prayer that our own relationships, whatever they may be, um, that they may grow in, in the love of God and in our, our virtues for, for hope and for service and for compassion. So I invite you to please stand. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Gracious Father, we ask that you bless your people. May you guide them always in, all, in, in every step that they take towards building their friendships and relationships with other people. May the joy of Jesus be with them as they uh, actively seek to be filled with light, with compassion, with forgiveness. In service of others, may they find joy. May they be reconciled to their friends and loved ones with every action that they take in the name of Jesus. May their relationships grow and, and strengthen them as they know and understand the love of one another. May relationships continue to bear the fruit of your love. May marriages be strengthened, reconciled, and forever be an example to all those around them, their children and grandchildren, of the love that exists as we sacrifice for one another, for the greater good, for the things that are sometimes in the interest of others. We ask you, Lord, to help us be selfless people, to be always self-sacrificial, to bear always the good in your name, and to offer the very best efforts that we can daily. We understand that our imperfections sometimes lead us astray, and sometimes we suffer, Lord, and sometimes our sacrifice may at times bear the burden of the cross in our hearts and in our lives. But we ask you to always uplift us, to guide us in every step we take. May Jesus' name be ever on our lips and we be we consoled and strengthened as we love one another and bear the joy of being called Christians in your name. We ask everything through Christ the Lord and may you bless all the friendships and relationships that we hold in our hearts May marriages be strengthened, and may those who seek holy relationships, may they be get guided by the Holy Spirit and strengthened by the resolve to one day come before your presence to ask for the blessing of marriage in sacrifice. God bless you all. And now we are going to do the final blessing. So I hope that this week there will be no complaints. You are receiving many blessings. Keep at it. Do the very best you can. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Father. Please join us in our closing hymn, which can be found in your Gather Songbook, number 294, City of God. Again, in your Gather Book, number 294. Thank <clears throat> you.